Welcome back everybody. This is going to be our Algebra 2 Quadratic Functions Unit Lesson Number 1 Quadratic Function Review Homework Review Part Homework Review Part 2. Uh, I hope you guys caught the first one and we're starting off with question number 5. A quadratic function is shown in the table below which the following statements is not true about the function based upon your table. On this table, explain your choice. The function has x-intercept of 3. Well, let's take a look at this. So x-intercept of 3 would mean that when x equals 3, y equals 0. Okay? So we see here, x equals 3, y equals 0. This is true. Okay. The function has a y-intercept of 3. That would mean when x equals 0, y equals negative 3. So y is of negative 3, x equals 0. Y equals negative 3. That's true. Okay. The function's lead coefficient is negative. Well, let's take a look. Now, how we know this, though? Okay. Well, we're going to take a look here. I'm going to take a look at actually the um, choice 4. The function has a turning point of 1, comma. This should really be negative 4. So sorry about this flub here. 1 comma negative 4. All right, and turning point in this case is going to be the vertex. And well, it definitely has a point of 1 negative 4. Okay, so let's take a look. So 1 comma negative 4 here. And we'll see here that the values around them, the y values, are going to kind of mirror each other. So this is actually going to be true. All right, the turning point is going to be where the, dire the direction changes, and also at the point where, almost like in this case, on the on the axis symmetry, and the the y values will reflect each other. So this is true. Now for for number three, we see here that the values are increasing from here from here to here. It's actually going plus one. From here to here, we're going plus two. This is going to be plus one. Here, here's uh, it's not plus two, plus four actually, plus four. The y values are getting higher as x gets larger. That's plus nine, and so this one has to be the false one. Now, why? We had mentioned before in the last one that in this case, the coefficient is negative. The direction of the parabola will be facing downwards, but here we see that our parabola is facing upwards because the y values are increasing. So <clears throat> the one that is false is going to be choice three. Okay. Question number six. Consider the quadratic function whose equation is f of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 8. Sketch a graph of f on the grid provided. Over what interval is f decreasing? Over what interval is f of x less than zero? and state the range of f. To begin this, uh, in class we mentioned about how we want to find the axis of symmetry. Axis symmetry, in this case, the formula is x equals negative b over 2a. And we'll use that to help us determine the middle number for our range of, uh, well, our table of values for x that we'll use to find the values for y. And so we see here that our x, our b value is 2, and our a value is negative 8. Oh, so I did not c value, sorry. a value is 1. So in this case, we'll have negative 2 over 2 times 1. We get x is equal to negative 1. And that's, our, that's going to be our, um, our axis symmetry, right? Now, to find the matching y value, f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 8. And so we'll get in this case 1 minus 2 minus 8 will equal to negative 9. All right, so the vertex in this case will be here negative 1 comma negative 9. Okay, now this will be helpful for our table later on. So let's make our table. The values we're going to be using, x and y. I like using seven values. And 
And the middle number we're going to use for our values is going to be our negative 1. So we have negative 1 here. We have negative 2. I have negative 3. I have negative 4. And then 0, 1, and 2. Okay, so we already know what the matching y value is going to be for, for, negative, or for x is negative 1. That's negative 9. And the function is, in this case, remember our function here, uh, it's a little top here, but we can see kind of resembling here, f of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 8. We're plugging our values in, and the easy one to plug is 0. And you plug in 0, you're going to get a negative 8 for a y value. Negative 8. All right? And because negative x equals negative 1 is axis symmetry, uh, on the other side will be the same exact value here, so negative 8. So that's the great thing about this whole reflecting here. This axis symmetry is only a line of reflection for the parabola. So plugging 1, 1 squared is 1, and 2 times 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 minus 8 is negative 5, so that's negative 5. Here's negative 5. And if we plug in 2, a 2 squared will be 4. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8 minus 8 is 0. Okay, so that's our table here. So it's going to use, and maybe I'll bring this up a little bit higher. So when I, when I graph this, well, maybe a little smaller. Yeah, I'll just group this here together. So when I, yeah, there you go. Put this in the screen. So now we're going to graph, okay? All right, so let's see now. Let's plot some points here. Let's, uh, I guess I'll use uh, maybe blue. Hopefully blue comes up. So when x equals, when x equals negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, y is 0. Okay, x is negative 3, y is negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When x is neg 2, y is neg 8, so 6, 7, 8. When x is neg 1, y is neg 9. And then <clears throat> x is 0, y is neg 8. When x is 1, y is neg 5. When x is 2, y is 0. So, now the rest of the problem is going to definitely go further up because we see it's facing upwards, right? So the graphless parabola will kind of look something like this. I hope I can get all the points right. Kind of a, a U-shape here. Okay. All right. There you go. That's kind of a sketch of the graphing. It's a sketch. It's a sketch. Uh, I probably want to include the, the equation here. F of X is equal to X squared plus 2x minus 8, all right? And so over what interval, now we're doing part B, this is part A, all for part A. Part B, over what interval is f decreasing? <clears throat> well, we see, we talk about decreasing is when, as you move to the right, the direction of the graph is going downwards. So we see here that the graph is going decreasing as we're going this way. Going down, going down, up to this point here. Okay, this point here is the vertex. This point here is the vertex, which is we said negative one comma negative nine. Okay, so here, when is the uh, interval decreasing? The interval is decreasing, and I'm going to type this because my handwriting is terrible. So, uh, use this font here, it's a little smaller. Part B, the interval, the uh, interval that the function is decreasing, decreasing is when x is less than eight, x is less than neg one. Now I'll move this over a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see here. Now, why is that? Well, for all values of, of x less than less than neg 1, the graph is always going to go lower and lower and lower. However, afterwards, after x equals his negative 1, it's going to go higher. So, it will be this one that will be increasing. What interval is f of x less than 0? Well, in this case, 
we see all of this here, in this case, all of this portion of the graph is below the x-axis. And that will be from, and remember in this case, this is, this here is that x is equal to neg 4, and this is x, x is equal to 2. So we'll say in this case, okay, for part C, the function is, is less than 0. In this case, from negative 4 is less than x is less than 2. Not equal to, because that's when equal to 0. Okay? And finally, let's take the range of the graph of, of f. Now the range is all the possible y values. And the lowest y value, the lowest y value we see here in parabola is going to be neg 9. All right, but notice that the rest of the graph will be at neg nine or higher. So the whole graph is going to be hit all the y values at neg nine and higher. So for so for part D, we would say we would say in this case the range of F will be. Y is, I use the right symbol here, greater than or equal to, let me grab this one here, right? Here we go. Neg 9. That's your range. Because what all the possible Y values of function will be at negative 9 or higher. Okay? I'll make this full page. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the end of our video for part two of our quadrag function homework review and i hope you guys found it helpful if you did please give it a like and leave any questions or comments below uh for further if you like oh why is this why is that you know in case i didn't explain things i'll try to get back to you you know i will get back to you um try to explain why in a little better okay uh thanks for watching all right uh and I'll, again i hope you guys have a wonderful day i will see you in the next video take care be safe